Hey there guys, it's Joey, and so I thought we would continue on with the comparison of the Wild Unknown Tarot, the sort of engaging with the imagery as I would engage with it to help me understand these tarot cards and their meanings to me. And I'm comparing them to the Shadowscapes tarot deck which I've had for two years? Maybe more than, maybe three years? I'm not quite sure. I've had it quite a while and I still love that deck and I still am embracing that deck but I'm also embracing sort of this other side of me, the sort of slightly more shadow side through the Wild Unknown Tarot and I had some really encouraging messages from people to keep doing this, they were interested so thank you everybody who's commented and said you know please keep doing this, it's, it's interesting and it's helpful and it's you know it helps show how different people could interact differently with cards and the different meanings that throw up and I've had some people comment on things that they see things differently and my response to that is that's exactly my point is that everybody interacts with things in their own way and what means something to somebody isn't going to mean the same thing to someone else and that's how the sort of journey with any form of divination is an entirely personal one and that's something to be embraced I think completely and utterly so thank you for everyone who's commented thank you big special thank you to the four queens who said you know keep doing it it's it's good so big thank you to her and we shall we shall keep doing it and I've pulled four cards today I'm going to probably vary the amount of cards that are in, in here there's only one of the major arcana so sometimes the minor arcana is a little bit less in depth meaning wise not necessarily but it can go that way so I've picked four today and we're going to start off with this card which is the Emperor so I'm trying to make sure you can get a nice view of it. I believe it's an oak tree in, in, in its sort of shaded. It, it's the silhouette of a tree is what I'm trying to say. And then the colour again is the eclipsed sun up the top. The Empress is the reverse which is worth noting for future reference. And as I said in the original video of this, there are no people in the Wild Unknown deck, which is fabulous in, in some ways. It can make the understanding of the card a little bit more difficult, perhaps, for you know, because you are associating masculine energies in this circumstance without actually there being any male figure there. And it's just how you perceive masculinity within nature I guess which is, is really interesting. I do find this card quite masculine. I don't know if it's the the way that it's quite imposing, it's sort of centre and tall and sort of broad and has to me that element of almost like a man with a shield, that same sort of energy as and I'm assuming that's an oak tree someone else might assume it was something else but for me oak is probably the most masculine tree for me personally and not everyone will agree with that but again personal experience and that tree is masculinity in nature as far as I'm concerned so that's when that immediately popped into my head as that's the tree on the card that then represents that very sturdy masculine energy. And the other thing that's great about the imagery for the tree is if you start to think about what trees are, you know, how they are deeply rooted in the earth, unyielding unless humans interfere with them, or nature has a, a, a field day in thunderstorms in, in certain weather. But generally speaking, they are deeply rooted in the earth. They are deeply grounded, they are unmoving, they are part and parcel of the world around us, they are nature 
and they are sturdy and firm and unyielding you know and particularly this tree particularly oak feels very unyielding to me some of the other trees have a bit more movement a bit more fluidity and perhaps are a little bit more feminine say willow for example but um oak is very very grr very sturdy i think there's something slightly phallic about that card <laughs> you it might be me it might be me <laughs> The very, very limited use of colour is quite masculine as well. It's, it's sort of, for me, it touches on the sort of the idea of the masculine side of how often masculinity is perceived within the human brain. So men are considered to be more logical. <laughs> This is debatable, obviously, but more more logical and straightforward, whereas women are supposed to be more uh, good with their emotions and verbal skills. So the lack of colour in some ways to this is very, very logical. Like, there is only a very strict amount of colour in the most logical place, which is the sun, which is sort of eclipsed. And the sun would be more masculine in most people's consciousness than the moon as well so that's very very masculine that card and that very unyielding very you know grounded and such so the emperor in the Puman law deck is this one and I will move these cards out of the way so I can sit these two next to each other hopefully for a bit of a comparison I'll try and zoom in a little because unfortunately I can't move things around quite so easily. Okay, well we'll have a good look. So, or we would, but the... Thank you. So it's very, very masculine. Again, he has his antlers. They look a lot like um, yak horns, actually, on him. He has an ank tied around one of them. He has leaves over his forehead. They do look a bit oak leafy. I'm trying to see and show you at the same time. His posture is defensive. He's almost part of nature himself in this card with roots growing up from his feet. He is rooted. He is quite tree-like. I'm just going to look what's in the centre of the orb. I think it's supposed to be a dragon. And it will, And he's also... I don't know how well this is going to... Come on, please. Just. He's also got armaments on one arm. The position is very masculine as well. That very sort of... And I'll show you the carvings around the outside. The carvings look like all sorts of druidy animals. So he's very druid-esque, if you ask me. It's a it's a good card. Um, I think I actually, in this case, prefer the Wild Unknown one. It's just, I think there is something perfect in its simplicity. And I don't know. But I will read you again from the Shadow Shapes Companion book by Stephanie Puman Law. Um, what this card means and then if, if it relates to this card well. So creating order out of chaos, authority, leadership, strength, establishing law and order. Uh, the carvings on the wall behind bear symbols of domain and dominion. And it goes into that a little bit. I don't think we need to go into that too much. The imagery of the carvings is also a man-made edifice. Man's measure and means of controlling the wilderness of the world by attempting to carve it into it, and into unchanging stone. Man's desire to control and etch out and write the story of his own destiny. It may be a man rooted in his ways, views, regimens, etc. Um, but confident that this is the right structure and the right way of things. It's an interesting almost mirror of each other actually when you think about it because this one sort of talks about man's need to impose his will on the world around him whereas this is the will of nature being imposed upon us. So it's a really interesting sort of reversal and it's the same idea but from a different perspective. Like It's, it's, it's like viewing the same thing through completely different lenses which is actually fantastic which is actually what I wanted the deck for. So. I don't think we need to go into that any more than that, I, I don't think. I think that is just pre pretty solid understanding of that card. That's, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Right, 
so we'll move that over. I've just realised I've put my other ones away. There, there you go. Get back there. So the next card I pulled was... Okay, let me see. Let's hold it up. This one is the Nine of Pentacles. It's not very earthy again. Um, the pentacles in this set aren't, you know, aren't stereotypically earthy at all. Now, there are four feathers sort of framing. That looks like a rune. And the rune, I have completely forgotten. But it's a positive rune. Oh. Actually, I'm seeing that rune all the time. Anyway, the, the feathers look very much like swan feathers to me. Maybe because of the, the space to allow sort of the light to travel through them. There's something quite exotic about this card. Now, I'm not sure if I would say exotic or Native American because I have both images pop up through my mind. We again have red and yellow working through the background. Now, red, red and yellow in regards to this card, I mean, that's quite passionate, quite strong, quite... Um, fiery which is odd then we have the um obviously the crossing over of of swan feathers now swan feathers would be to me quite airy and and protective and loving and that sort of that sort of closeness of four feathers that suggests familial ties like family ties like the comfort or friends family maybe even a lover all encapsulating the pentacles. Now the pentacles are, you know, often considered to be earthy, home, hearthy, etc. So the safety and warmth of a loving community perhaps around the idea of home. I'm not sure if that's going to be spot on, but then we compare it to this uh, Puman Law and Puman Law's pentacles are completely earthy. They're greens, they're turquoise, the beauty, the oof, the there's branches coming out. So I'm gonna let's have a bit of a close-up. Look at this card. Look at this card. The art is amazing. So there's a woman on a on a on a shell playing the piano which has branches growing out of it and then a stained glass window with a star. Can we please focus? I feel daft as anything so it's an incredibly beautiful card so I'm going to read that to you and see how well these compare I have a feeling these are not going to compare that well they might do I might be completely wrong um, her spiritual being being sorry is in communion communion with the material aspects of her life she strives to make the connection musically through an elaborate instrument Metal and wood, uh, crafted to create beauty and order. The piano, however, is not man-made. It is of the surrounding world. It is inextricably entwined to the fabric of nature. It's part of the forest, etc. She is alone. She comes to seek solitude that the woods offer. She is content in self-sufficiency. The snail shell she sits on. And the spirals in the branches are a physical representation of a gold mean ratio, a continuum that approaches the infinite, approaches balance, approaches the ideal. Oh my god, how beautiful is this card? Uh, she looks up at the stained glass window, the perfection of the sun shining through it, etc. The balance of the material with the spiritual, it is material well-being and refinement, discipline in order to attain such, relying on oneself, trusting in one's abilities, it's the understanding and appreciation of the wealth that one already possesses. Okay, I think Puman Law wins for, for, for this round because that, that spoke more of community, whereas this speaks of self-sufficiency and... I mean, this could be the idea of feathers of the soul encapsulate, you know, that we are content within ourselves. I could see that. But that, to me, speaks more of of community, of the crossover of things. I mean, perhaps it is the crossover between spirituality and, and materialism. That could be quite possible with the, the crossing over of the feathers, the feathers encapsulating the pentacles. But it's a definitely more 
subtle message than, than all the incredible artwork of this card. Difficult. Difficult. I think the wild unknown really does shine more in its m m m uh, more in its major arcana than it does in its minor arcana, although this one I think is an exception. This is the Eight of Swords and it's amazing, I think. The I know uh, about the Eight of Swords I, I can is one of those cards I remember. Um, <laughs> It's been one of those cards I have frequently battled in my life against and it's basically being tied to a negative situation often the tie is in the mind and you know you are able to get out of it if you can just change your way of thinking perhaps which is what swords is often about you know the intellect sword of the mind rationale element of air for me anyway. It makes more sense that way. Although thinking about it, when I consider my tools, I consider the Athame to be quite fiery. <laughs> Such a confusing muddle of things anyway. Um, but this card is incredible because this card basically has a butterfly in a state of metamorphosis hanging from one of the swords, the other sword around it. Nothing says you are trapped by the way you currently are, but if you transformed yourself you would fly free and beautiful in spiritual harmony, then the idea of a, a butterfly in metamorphosis, in between, I mean, it's simplistic, but it's absolutely perfect imagery-wise. And this is the strength of the Wild Unknown Tarot. When it gets it right, it is spot on, because that is simplistic imagery, but there is so many layers of meaning. You can take the imagery of the butterfly. You can take the imagery from it hanging from the sword by its own will, because, you know, they set up where they want to transform themselves. You can tie into the idea that if anybody interferes with a butterfly while it, why it's transform a uh, caterpillar while it's transforming itself into a butterfly then it, it will die and it has to go through that huge amount of pressure and self-reliance and self uh, sort of hardship to emerge from that and become something and then obviously butterflies are spiritual and the symbolism behind them and the freedom and the it's huge amounts of imagery and it's gorgeous and it's absolutely perfect for the meaning of the card. This is a Stephanie Pooh Manlaw one. Let's uh, close up because there is a lot more artwork going on here. There is a swan trapped down with the swords. There is a little hummingbird flying up above. Thorns sort of trapping it down. There are bird skulls underneath the swan. And there's sort of a... I, it's a person involved in this sort of cave-like thing. I'm not quite sure what the person is supposed to be. We'll, we'll read and you'll see what I mean about the butterfly being... Do, do, do. If we can get swords. Come on. It's all swords recently. <sighs> oh, it's the Bramble's Crone. Okay, the Bramble's Crone lives along the blackberry hedges where the fruit is tempting and sweet, but the leaves have wickedly sharp thorns to catch and hold. The hummingbird can navigate th through ugh, through the tangles with ease, can being able to flip through the tiny gaps and weave past thorns with great ease. But the noble and grand elegance of the swan is with the arching expanse of her wings is not for such tangled and thorny corridors. Uh, she's not the first to have fallen victim to the bramble's crone, such as the skulls underneath because others have come who thought that they were mightier and arrogant and could get away with it. Like the tangled enchanted briar forest that surrounded Sleeping Beauty and tempted hundreds of brave knights to die, pure might and abusive power is not the way to victory. The hummingbird flits close, calm, she urges, as the swan ceases to flail, the thorns cease to cut and the hummingbird gently pushes one branch side at a time and the swan sees the light of freedom shining from above, distant but attainable. 
Do not waste energy on trivial pursuits. It's easy to freeze up in a crisis, to feel restricted, confused, powerless and trapped by circumstances. But there is always a way out if you take a moment out to breathe and reassess. So the Puma Law one is beautiful imagery as always. I mean, I don't think there's a single card in, in her deck that I, I don't think is incredible. And I actually think they, these two cards and their meanings intertwine really, really well in this circumstance. There is the slight difference, the sort of, this one sort of says, it will be difficult, but it's worth it. And this one sort of says, take a moment to reassess and stop struggling because, whereas this one sort of, sort of says you know the struggle will be worth it this one says you need to stop struggling quite so much and reassess reevaluate find a different way of doing it whereas i think there's only self-reliance of one way of doing it in this card that you know reassessment is the message in this so they do take have a slightly different take on what the meaning of the card is but that's fine because it's a different tarot deck a different way of viewing the world So last but not least is the Ace of Swords. The I told you it was all swords. Oof. <laughs> and the Ace of Swords in this circumstance is a really strong card. Pretty as well. We have lightning bolts at the top. Mostly black but coming into some white lighter shading in the background. The sword itself is pure white, there is no detail on the sword whatsoever, and then it's surrounded by an infinity symbol which looks an awful lot like a snake. It has very snake-like scales on it and the colours sort of go from one end of the spectrum to the other, so it's in encapsulating every colour in the spectrum is the idea behind it, and it, in idea if not in actuality and that is looping around the sword, just binding it into the idea of infinity. Now, I'm going to put the card down. Can we see you all right from there? I think that way. There we go. It's a beautiful card. So, lightning, that flash of realisation, because it's against air and swords, it's sort of in the realm of the mind, the rational, logical self, and that's just how I interact with air cards full stop. It's always about um, reason, logic, mind, intellect, that sort of thing with, with swords as far as I'm concerned. So those flashes of lightning are sort of flashes of inspiration, flashes of realisation, um, sharp moments of relief in the darkness, and then there, of course, is light down here. So it might be sharp, sharp moments of realization start to lighten the situation, bring about understanding. And then you have the very, very different infinity loop. So the infinity loop is tied into the idea of God and goddesshood, of all things being connected the eternity, the, the realm of spirit being eternal and ongoing and the cycles. Um, it's supposed to look very much like a snake and snake in the imagery there tying into the idea of knowledge again, whether you see it as in the positive sense or in the negative sense depending on what uh, branch of spirituality you're pulling on. Um, snake has always been associated with knowledge and it's why it's tied into the medical institution. Um, you see the images of the snake in that Greek history, woo! And <laughs> the embodiment of all the colours means that everything that, to me, it would mean that everything is there available to you. There is no colour in the sword, but there is colour in the, the eternal symbol. So all the knowledge is there to be taken and put on the blank slate behind it. So if the sword is our mind, then our mind is a blank canvas ready to take on all this knowledge, to embrace it. And that knowledge is right there, weaving its way around us, but it's not a part of us yet. It's, it's a beginning. And then we compare it to the Stephanie Pooman Law. It's in the different direction for starters. It's face down rather than face up. So um, whereas the face up might be pointing towards the heavens, this is this is pointing down, more Excalibur-esque in style. 
There are butterflies abounding in this one and there are three swans around it. There's a huge sense of light. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be an eye on there, but there might also be there is also an infinity symbol on this one. It's just two interlinking circles more than the infinity symbol. So that's interesting. I don't know if it'll probably won't zoom in. But there you go. Isn't that gorgeous? Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Right. I love the description from the book for this one. The sword is double-edged. It can slice with swift assurance of justice to clear obstru obstructions that hide the truth. It can also be the beacon to use intelligence and fairness and achieve clarity. Or it can be wielded with arrogance of raw power in the heat of rage. These are the two sides of strength that is embodied in this weapon, two very different uses of force to work one's will upon the world. Something is beginning, etc, etc, etc. From the vortex, something arises that will force the duality of the Ace of Swords to slice one way or another. There are the sylphs, sylphs, sylphs there, and guardians of the sword, the winged beings of the sky. The swan is lovely etc, but the delicacy is a facade that cloaks a strong body and a fierce nature. The swan will fight to protect its own and strong winds open, open to catch th and strong winds open and strong wings open to catch them ride the winds across great distances. Ugh. So again there is that intellectual thing but I think this one comes across as intellectual pursuit better just from me talking about it, just from, I love the idea of it being the blank canvas and the colour is right there in, in the, the realm of the spirit and it can be interacted with with our minds, we can achieve it. I love that imagery from, from this card, I think that's great, I love the flash of illumination, I think it's wonderful, absolutely great, absolutely beautiful. I actually prefer this one, I think, because just of, the imagery there has actually spoken to me quite, quite, obviously I think for this video. So that's going to be it for this video. Uh, I will be doing more of these videos. I will keep them between three or four, pushing into five if they're all minor, perhaps because it won't take me quite so long to go over and discuss them. So I hope you enjoyed this video and many blessings.